Welcome back to House TV Live. I'm Rick Spence, and with me today is Krista Waterworth Alterman in Palm Beach, Florida. Beautiful Palm Beach, Florida. She's going to share with us her amazing kitchen and her amazing bedroom. Pretty dramatic before and afters. Thanks for joining us, Krista. So great to have you. You've been on House for quite a while, winning all these awards, and we finally get a little peek of your home. Absolutely, Rick. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Great to meet you. Ah, absolutely. Virtually. We'll do it in person one day. Let's jump right into the kitchen. The kitchen's pretty dramatic. It was fairly dated. What were the main things you wanted to do? What wasn't working in the kitchen? Well, I'm a big cook and we entertain a lot in my house. So it was really important for me to have a vibrant, open kitchen with lots of surfaces for me to not only cook and prepare food, but also put food out for our guests. So surfaces were one of your first choices. So tell me about the countertop and the island, what you went with there and what you were thinking behind those materials. I chose marble countertops, which is a little daring. And the reason is because if you're going to choose marble or if you're going to choose any natural surface, you have to have passion for it because it's gonna take love and maintenance. And I did really thick countertops too, to give it that sort of like kind of sexy vibe where you've got a lot of natural veining and you can see it from every angle. And I really love that about marble. I love marble so much that I actually carried it up the backsplash of the kitchen as well. And that really tells a story. The backsplash really is a story in and of itself because you can see the veining and you know that that came from the middle of the earth. And that is something I love. I love that. And you know, I've talked to some cooks in the past too, bakers especially, who love marble. So tell me about the characteristics of marble in terms of why it's so great for someone who cooks a lot. It is wonderful. My daughter's actually a budding baker. So we do a lot of baking and being able to lay out dough and roll dough and utilize the surface, the cool surface of marble is a really wonderful you know, element to have in a kitchen if that's the kind of work that you're doing there. I love how on the island you have the little nook that you can sit, you can actually cozy up. I wanted the island to have seating on two sides because I wanted to be able to communicate and talk and chat across the island. I didn't want to have to stand on one side and have my guests on the other. And also I sit there and do homework with the kids. So it's nice to be next to each other, be able to chat with each other and be close and cozy. Let's jump to another cool little detail is your bar stools. Adds a, like a wood earthy element to the space. I'm so glad you like them. They are handcrafted in Brooklyn, New York. I am a New Yorker at heart. I lived there for 11 years. I love utilizing local talent. A really cool wood guy that creates amazing furniture. I love when you have something in your home that was created and made by someone you know, and they were crafted by his hands, you know, not by a machine. Yeah, I really love those. Such a rich, beautiful wood, really nice. Let's talk about what's in the island now, your choice of materials and also the appliance functionality of it. So I'm a huge tea drinker. I drink hot tea, even though I live in South Florida all day long. I got you yes. right here, I got you. I got Cheers, you. Cheers, my friend. Cheers. <laughs> of course, this says best dad. Wait, ever. I should be holding should... that one. I should be holding that. <laughs> Let's switch cups. All right, all right. Virtual <laughs> switch. <laughs> I needed to have an Insta Hot because I'm a tea drinker. And that was really something important to me. I also love filtered water. So it was important to have the cooling element as well. So I have a hot and cold faucet next to our regular water faucet. And that functions really nicely. I chose polished nickel for all the finishes on my um, faucets, but then I mixed in some of that really cool brass finish that's really popular right now. Mm -hmm. To use brass, you have to be a little daring too because there's so many different colors of gold out there. So actually matching my cabinetry hardware with my lighting was something that took a few tries and a few fails before I got there. Before we hop into the cabinetry, tell me about the sink. It sort of has this like flange. What did you do with the sink there? Yes, that's actually a beveled top and it holds a cutting board, which is an accessory that comes with that sink. Oh, and that's nice. why I love Kohler. Kohler products have really amazing accessories and their kitchen sinks. I use them on almost every project I do. Let's hop into the cabinetry now. Tell me what your choices were there. What I decided to do was keep my perimeter cabinetry 
and paint it in a high gloss white. So I use a lot of Benjamin Moore and that's pure white. That's the name of the color. I wanted it to be so bright that it reflected all of the natural light coming into that room so that it almost glows, you know, during the day. And then I put in new cabinetry on the island itself. That's all new cabinetry. And that is a platinum, almost gray blue stained finish. I did a really cool large pantry as well in that finish. And then in the adjacent room, I did media cabinetry in that finish as well to kind of pull everything together. So how did you balance drawers versus upper cabinetry versus see-through? You know, what was the philosophy there? That's really important to understand when you're designing a kitchen. How many different layers and textures and different elements do I want to pull in? I definitely mixed some beautiful mullion cabinetry with the glass behind it because I have an area where I have a bar and I wanted to display all of our liquor, have it be available and easy to find. And I love that that part of my kitchen is right near my wine fridge. So that's almost our little sort of bar area where we entertain a lot. People come over there, make their drinks. And I also knew that layering in some, not only some glass elements with the solid elements, create some really fun and interesting design features. Mixing up the color choices as well and having an island that's a different color and perimeter cabinetry that sort of contrasts that is a layered effect too that really makes it look more like a designer kitchen. Yeah, very, very nice. And then you got a a pretty big statement with the lighting in there as well. I love those lights because they look like, almost like a boiled egg sitting in an egg cup, you know? So they they have like a very kitchen flavor for that reason. I actually used those lights in another project and I love them so much. I put them in my kitchen. You have about what, 10 foot ceilings, something like that. Did you yes. tell me about the ceiling in there? What did you do in there? I put shiplap on my ceilings. And the reason is partially because they were knocked down, which means they had that textured finish that mm-hmm. I didn't really like. And a lot of builder homes in communities in South Florida have that. So I didn't want to scrape that off. It's very messy and costly. I decided to laminate it with this beautiful tongue and groove and paint it white, and it really elevates the whole space. When you're doing something like that, where the ceiling's a little bit higher, and you're thinking about trim on the cabinetry, so you have your trim along the top part of the cabinetry, what are some tricks you can share around that, making that all work, like in this space? Are you a designer, Rick? (laughs) Just through osmosis. That's a really good question. Trim on cabinetry is so one of those things that you have to be a seasoned designer to be able to figure out. Trim on cabinetry is a puzzle. It's important that it not only matches your the trim throughout the rest of the space, but it doesn't compete with it either. And also you have the issue of do you when you run your cabinets to the ceiling, do I carry the same you know, crown molding throughout the space and match that, or which is what I did, the second choice is I kept my cabinets floating and I did a different trim on the cabinetry than I did in the rest of that room. And it all ties together. So different trim, all the trims need to match and work together. Let's go to uh, something a little bit more mundane, but equally important, the tile floor. So that was the existing floor. That's a warm travertine tile. And it was really important to me to utilize that look and that vibe throughout the space and not ignore it. I love that the warmth of that tile actually makes it feel cozier with all of the really white and bright elements and those cooler colors, even with the island and the marble countertops, very white, very bright, lots of cool colors that warm surface material really grounds the space. Congratulations on that. And I can see why your clients are absolutely loving your work and you're winning all these awards on house. Just awesome stuff. So um, let's hop into the bedroom. So this before was actually a very Mediterranean space as well. Lots of heavy drapery, dark colors. So I really wanted to lighten and brighten this space. To me, 
The master bedroom is the sanctuary. You work hard, you wanna come home and have that place where you can be cozy, you can be comfortable, you can take off your shoes, you can be you. And the way you do that is you layer in interesting textiles and fabrics to create that sensibility without overwhelming. And I love natural fabrics like linens and you know, cotton and things that feel good to the touch, velvet. That, those are the types of fabrics I use in master bedrooms across the board. I went with a linen bed. I love an actual bed with side rails and I love a footboard, but my husband is like 6'4", so that was out of the question. But I wanted a high headboard and lots of really beautiful coastal colors. Light blues, periwinkles, those types of things. Because we are in Florida, we love the beach, we're super Floridians at this point, and it's really important to bring that personality into the space because it's part of who we are. What's behind the bed? What is that writing on the wall there? That writing on the wall is actually our wedding song. It's the lyrics to our wedding song. Oh, bring, the, hu- bring the husband in. Let's see. Can you guys sing it for me? Or what song is it? What song is it? It is a Bruce Springsteen song because my husband's a Jersey boy mm-hmm. and it's called Valentine's Day. Oh, so it's a it's lyrics that you blew up. That it's is the, cool. Isn't that cool? So I have this wonderful guy who makes, you know, custom wallpaper and he created that for us from Bruce's notebooks, his music books. And it was him writing out the song before he, you know, while he was creating it. And then I had it blown up and put on the wall. We actually, it had like a really big coffee stain on it. And I was like, I think we need to take that out because I don't think I want that on my wall. That's not going to translate. You're going to keep explaining that. Is that on purpose? Is, did, exactly. did the original have the coffee stain? It was a napkin probably some, you know, from a diner he was at or whatever. Totally, yes. Tell me about the rest of the space here. You'll see that. I kind of meditated a little bit on trend. So I went with a lot of white and a lot of those neutral elements. We get a ton of natural light in this space. I love using bright colors because the natural light just bounces right off of it and reflects all over the room and automatically makes it happy, right? Because you just have a ton of light. And so that to me was really important. And so we have these beautiful nightstands that have a ton of storage. They're really oversized. And they, the reason why I wanted to have oversized nightstands is because I wanted those lamps, those amazing large glass and brass lamps. They're so heavy. I love oversized lighting. I think lighting is the perfect blend of form and function if it's done properly. So I have a huge drum light in here. It's about 36, 38 inches around. And, you know, this is not a large room. So that is a statement for me. It's like a massive bass, bass drum to go with the guitar. You could have right? some, you could have, yeah, it's, it's still, it's in the music theme. I like it. So who plays the guitar? You or your husband? He plays guitar and I sing out of tune. A lot of karaoke happens in my house. We have like serious mics and stuff like that because he plays we have guitars everywhere but that's what i mean about creating a space that works for you in your life it has to be filled with the things that you love you know not only the people you love and the things that you use like a guitar that you love but the design elements that you love that kind of reflect who you are and what makes you unique Well, thank you so much, Krista. Beautiful home. I really want to see the rest of it. The kitchen is amazing. The bedroom's amazing. I mean, you're doing just awesome, awesome work. So congratulations on all that. And I can't wait to see more of your work with your clients going forward. Oh, Rick, thank you so much. That feels so good to hear. We all need validation. So, but this was really wonderful to be a part of this. And thank you. And thanks. Thanks to House. Well, great talking to you. And we will be in touch and uh, take care. Okay. See you, Krista. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.